Hello, and welcome to our Women Together Power of Community and Sisterhood Conversation. My name is Christine Manoskis Woodwell, and I'm the Foundation Manager at KC Chamber. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. KC Chamber's Executive Women's Leadership Council and Small Business Programming have partnered to bring together a group of women influencers, disruptors, and advocates. These women leaders will share their insights and discuss how they have each built their own sisterhoods and inspired other women in their communities to cultivate productive, mutually beneficial relationships in service of collective success. During today's discussion, please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We will answer them at the end of our discussion. The chat function is also open, and if you'd like to use that, feel free. It is no secret that this year has been challenging for small businesses and women alike. We want to take this opportunity and share that the KC Chamber has launched the third COVID regional business survey. This is in partnership with several groups that are represented in the audience for this event, including KCADC, KC SourceLink, Black Chamber of Greater Kansas City, and Mid-America LGBT Chamber. We're going to drop the link to the survey and in the chat, and we would like to encourage you to take it sometime this week and share it within your networks. Common themes from the data that is collected will be released after the first of the year and shared with the federal congressional delegation in our advocacy for additional COVID business and community relief. Without further ado, it is my honor to introduce Nicole Van Denebiel, president of Bank Midwest, and not only the presenting sponsor of Women's Leadership Programming, but also Small Business CEO of Reception. Sponsors like Bank Midwest help us to host these important conversations and support the vital role of women in business. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you, Christine. My name is Nicole Van Denebiel, president of Bank Midwest. Bank Midwest is proud to support today's discussion as this event intersects two important initiatives at our bank supporting women's leadership and supporting small business. 2020 has added new challenges for women in the workforce. We have each had to navigate impacts to our businesses as well as unprecedented changes in our personal lives. This afternoon, you will hear an inspiring and uplifting conversation about the power of sisterhood and community. Each of these panelists has, in their own way, cultivated a community of other like-minded, successful, and well-connected women. They represent a diverse array of backgrounds, career paths, and industries. Our panelists will discuss their firsthand experiences of building a sisterhood of professional, fierce, like-spirited women who can act as sounding boards and offer encouragement and support. In their work and their lives, today's panelists are committed to helping one another succeed by fostering a culture of inclusion, positivity, education, championship, and building win-wins. We are all in for a treat. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our conversation facilitator, Lauren Conaway with Innovate Her Casey. Have to make sure that I unmute. Uh, thank you so much, Nicole, for that, that introduction. Uh, and thank you to Bank Midwest and the Casey Chamber for all of the incredible work you do on an ongoing basis to support our small business community. I think in times like this, that level of support has become even more crucial um, as we all look to our collective success. So, so thank you so much. I don't think anyone would argue that 2020 has been an easy year. Um, we're in the, the weeds of a global pandemic. We have economic and social ramifications that we're dealing with um, in addition to many other difficulties. So when we were planning this event, um, Vicki and Christine and the chamber team and I talked a lot about the tone that we wanted to set. Uh, Fred Rogers once said, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. My mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And today we have gathered a powerhouse group of women who are all each in their own way, helping to make our community better. Um, they are incredible leaders and I am just absolutely honored to share the virtual stage with them today. Um, I have a few questions in my back pocket, but do just want to, to let you know that first and foremost, we want this experience to be authentic and conversational. So as always, and like so many others before me, I'm going to be following the lead of these incredible women. 
So let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panelists. Classy Elsin is the president of KC Common Good, a nonprofit that is convening the Kansas City region to combat violent crime. She brings a wealth of knowledge from her unique background and experience as a political consultant, crisis management expert, nonprofit executive, and successful entrepreneur. She is widely known in KC and all over social media as the joyful millennial coach. And look at that smile. Uh, Allison Berry is founder and CEO of M Calibrate. She has 28 years of experience in growth strategy and marketing, and she's now serving as a fractional CMO to mid-market companies and fast-growing startups. In previous work with Fortune 500 consumer and B2B companies in the US and globally, Allison led corporate-wide strategic marketing initiatives for such companies as GE Capital, Wells Fargo, and DuPont. Her experience spans both US domestic and international marketing, particularly across the Asia region. Thela Cherry is the founder and owner of Cherry Company and is also the first black woman to own a retail clothing store on the Country Club Plaza. The combination of a successful clothing business with a strong footprint footprint in the community has led to multiple accolades for Cherry. This year alone, Thela was named to the Ebony Magazine Power 100 list and won the distinction of being the Casey Chambers 2020 Small Diverse Business of the Year. Julie Pierce is a senior vice president with more than two decades of experience with Henderson Engineers. As a founding board member for Empower, the Henderson Women's Affinity Group, as well as the firm's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council, Julie continues to encourage and promote a wide variety of perspectives, both within Henderson, as well as in her profession and community. A natural collaborator who is constantly encouraging others, Julie helps everyone around her raise their game. Sherry Turner has had a variety of experiences from corporate management to business development to entrepreneurship. She now serves the Kansas City metropolitan area in a leadership role with the Women's Employment Network, the Women's Business Center, Women's Capital Connection, and We Lend. Finally, last but not least, we have Kelly Wilson. She is the founder and owner of We've Got You Covered and owner of Sacred Stitches. Kelly's hard work and dedication to doing right by the customer, by the employee, and by society provided the blueprint for WGC's mission-driven social enterprise business model. A change maker and a bright light in the world, Kelly passionately asks, why can't we? So before we get started, I just want to say really quickly that these women, when the chamber approached me and asked me to facilitate this conversation, I was at first very excited, and then I had a moment of pure nerves because these women are incredible. That each and every one of them are just powerhouse leaders and amazing examples to the Kansas City community. Let's go ahead and jump in. And when I talk about striking the proper tone, uh, we talked a lot about the first question that I would be asking. So right now, I would like to give our panelists an opportunity in the in the spirit of true sisterhood to give a compliment to another panelist or talk about what you value about these these truly incredible women up on the virtual stage with you and classy i'm going to pick on you first because you're so joyful <laughs> well i have to tell you i'm reading the thread i'm looking at the women who i know from a personal and professional level and i'm just like beaming with so much joy but every woman on this stage inspires me um and i just admire them for being open and their compassion for the community and also the strength that we all carry. So I'm just excited to be here and thank you. And then Sherry, I'm gonna pick on you next. Yeah, that's that's kind of easy because they're all uh, rock stars, right? I'm, I'm especially intimidated by Julie Pierce. Uh, a couple decades in, in a, a male, traditional male industry and Henderson is known in the community in, in a really positive way uh, related to uh, women. And I that has to be because Julie's been a part of that senior leadership team for so long. You know, think about, think about two decades ago, 20 years ago. I mean, uh, so, so Julie, hats off to you. I'm, I'm uh, intimidated by you completely. <laughs> you know, I have to just laugh because Sherry, you probably don't know that it, it goes back to you. I'm, you know, I first um, actually saw you on uh, speaking at another event and you, um, you completely echo what you just said about me in terms of, wow. Um, and, the, and that really, that echoes the entire panel 
you know, there were, there were three words that I thought of when I looked at this panel of women today. I thought of resiliency because each and every one of you has done something amazing in your own regard. Um, I also thought about connections because somehow we're all connected by these weird dots. And I don't really know how we all connect each other, but, um, and then the finally, the thing is it's, it's courage. It's gosh, to have the courage. I'm going to, I'm going to call out Thela because Thela, you made such an impact on me earlier um, this year in a conversation that we had because you're willing to speak up and it's not just what you do with your business, but it's what you do outside your business. So I'm going to give that compliment over to Thela. Thank you so much, Julie. That's so kind. Um, I just really want to really give a shout out to Kelly Wilson. Um, and I'm choosing Kelly Wilson today because I just know how complex it is as an entrepreneur to build a business at all levels. Um, but what I saw just incredible strength and resilience and just power in Kelly was when she lost someone that she truly loved. Um, and I can really understand that. So I lost a powerful woman, my mother in 2016, and to really drive your business when you've lost someone is really complex. So my hat goes to you, Kelly. I'm so proud of you. I am just so thrilled that you have been able to sustain and be strong through it and to continue to build your business. Kelly, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, we knew it would happen. <laughs> yep. You know, Thela, you lead into something that I found to be very important about this whole concept today for this conversation. And it is the women who are part of your community, your chosen sisters that show up when things are dark and when they're not dark, when they're absolutely wonderful. And I too, as the rest of you are looking at the slate of the panelists today and thinking, oh boy, why did I get invited to this? You know, it. It is truly an honor to be in the presence of and listen to the wisdom of other women that have gone before and made such an impact in the community. And I'm so grateful for all the women that have joined us today to hear this conversation. And I hope each of you leave here today with, you know, the promise to go make, you know, some more connections because it certainly is amazing. So thank you for including me today. I'd also like to add an example of uh, the courage that it took for Allison to leave uh, a, a cushy corporate world, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I, there's so many women doing this now by choice, not by default. And uh, certainly Allison, I've, I'm amazed at the risk that you took at the stage of your career you were at when you could have just, you know, hung out there and done it, but you had so much more to give and your talent is there and you've started your business and you're doing well. And um, there's just so many probably in the audience today that are in that spot as well. And um, that's, uh, Allison is a really good example of the success. And I think would say that it was the right decision for you personally, if, if I read between the, the lines. <laughs> oh, thanks, Sherry. That's very nice of you to say it. And I certainly have been happy with the decision. I want to, you know, kind of um, go back to a word that Lauren used earlier in terms of what I admire about this group. Um, uh, authenticity really comes to mind, um, particularly in the three or four of you who I just happen to know best. You know, I, I probably grew up through a version or around a version of leadership that was more traditionally corporate and formal and, and polished. And I have to say that what I admire, one of the things I admire most about Lauren, our moderator and Kelly and Sherry and Julie, as I happen to just know you all the most, is that you're so comfortable in your own skin and, um, and the ability to be candid and vulnerable. And yet in, in no way do, does that compromise how you're seen or how you carry yourself as in, incredible professionals. Uh, that's just something I really admire. And so um, I think authenticity is kind of a, just an important theme to me at this stage of my life and kind of going to what you said, Sherry, about moving into this next phase of my, my life. Well, so, so that was amazing. And I, I, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the chat a little. And I saw, you know, great job building each other up. I'm seeing some really 
fantastic feedback. Um, and I, I think that the intent of that question was to give you all the opportunity to do what you do already, which is build women up, um, but more specifically the women here on this panel. So, so I'm gonna start, um, really start with what I consider to be kind of the crux of of today, what today is all about. You know, we've talked a lot in the in the discussions leading up to uh, to, to this day um, in this event. We've talked a lot about sisterhood and what it has meant to us. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to reflect on that and tell the audience what does sisterhood mean to you. Um, you know, I, I think each of you embody that as a as a principle. But I'd like to hear in your own words, um, just kind of what you think, why, why is sisterhood important and how does it manifest in, in your life? And so why don't we go ahead and start, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pick on Allison a little bit, um, just cause you know, you were just talking and you're one of my mentors and I adore you. Uh, but <laughs> if you just wanna share with us. Sure, um, you know, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that the concept of sisterhood is one of these things that like maybe in like this latter sort of third or most recent third of my life and career that I've even really come to think about or be aware of, you know, like growing up through maybe more kind of male dominant um, corporate environments. It's just something I didn't know I was lacking um, and, and, and that was okay, right? You know, that was just sort of the environment that it was. Um, but I think, um, you know, and maybe more recently in, in, society in general, we're talking about themes that, you know, um, around sisterhood, diversity, those kinds of things that just weren't a thing, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but I, I truly value, um, I just um, feel so fortunate to now at least being able to lean into that in this stage of my life and career and um, all that that entails, which I'm sure we'll get into in terms of professional networks, personal networks, um, and so on. But anyway, the, the, that first thought is like, yeah, it's really only been like the last five, six years that I've even really been thinking about that much, um, very much. Well, I, I love that. And, and I would be really interested, Classy, I'm gonna pick on you next. As the joyful millennial coach, I'm excited to hear your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just give myself flashbacks. Um, as a young political con consultant here in Kansas City, I start out in a field that was 95% male and so for me, sisterhood really represented trust um, and community and really, uh, you know, having someone's back 100% and being willing to tell people when they need to stay in their lane and when they're wrong and when they're, you know, going to the right direction um, in their professional and personal life. Well, so, so that's great. And, and, and I, I, you know, Kelly, you and I actually talked a little bit earlier today, and I think you have a very um, unique story about how, you know, sisterhood and community has manifested in your life. Did, would you maybe want to tell us a little bit about that? If you don't mind me putting you on the spot? <laughs> no, no, I'd be, I'd be happy to share. Um, I was sharing with Lauren, we were talking earlier, referencing something Thala referenced, which is that I lost my wife unexpectedly the very first week of this year. And she was the co-owner and founder of both companies. So she was not only my spouse, she was the other half of all of my, you know, companies. And in that unexpected loss and in the uh, magnitude of trying to figure out how to run a couple of businesses, the women in my life stepped in. Um, I was stunned by, they knew what to do and I didn't have to ask. And I have reflected so many times over the past year as COVID hit and just things kept rolling along. Um, what would I have done if I had not built a community of women who knew what I needed when I needed it? And I think about Thayla calling me in the middle of the night. I think about all the women that stepped up and made sure my business was running and I had what I needed. Um, and the power of the sisterhood in that moment for me, it's kind of a unique calling on that. I mean, I've got all the other good ones, but that was just amazing. Um, yeah. I think we have a responsibility as women to bring people like Allison, to your point, you were talking, uh, like you didn't really know what you were missing. You know, uh, I would say most of us come from a male dominated 
environment, right? If you're in the corporate world. And, and so you didn't even know, but once, once you've experienced it and you've experienced that there is authenticity to it and there's this peer to peer, um, a real uh, kind of feedback that you can trust uh, mm -hmm. in most cases, I wouldn't say in all cases, but in most cases, um, it's really, I think a responsibility that each one of us bring other women along into a sisterhood. Um, it, it, I work in the women's space and I have been for 16 years. I didn't plan on doing that for 16 years, but what is um, open every day that's refreshing is that the commitment between women uh, is, is really, really significant. And it is a lasting uh, situation. Uh, as long as you're prepared to give uh, your part in that, I think, it's, um, I think it's the way in which we support each other in, in anything that we would do, not just a, a career shift or uh, building a business, but really a little bit in our moral character. You know, how are we handling everything? Because we're such holistic uh, people, right? Different than compartmentalizing. Women are, hey, it's all about how does the family interfere with the business, interfere with church, interfere with sports. Um, so I, I think it's really important that we have that responsibility as women. You know, Sherry, I just have to chime in because um, I have to, I have to say there's such an opposite thing happening for me. I, I do work in, a, in an environment where there's a lot of male, but I'm one of three sisters. And, and so, you know, in true fashion, you know, I called my sisters last night and this morning and reached out to them and said, you know, what do you think about sisterhood? You know, and that, that goes back to, you know, how I was raised. And the thing I want to share with everyone, it goes back to what Sherry said on support. It's, you know, your sisters are going to tell you the truth. You know, they're not going to lie mm -hmm. to you. Now, that, that could be what you're wearing. It could be what, how you're conducting yourself. It's that late night um, phone call that, why in the world did you do that? But I think it's that unconditional, you know, support that a sister has. And I don't know if I really realized that fully in my profession, um, like Allison was saying earlier, until later on in life, um, because I did have a lot of really great, strong male mentors and male um, figures in my life that I worked with a lot of really, I still work with a lot of really great, uh, great men. Um, but it's been a blessing to me to also be able to call in a support group that, that really you can, you can reach out at any time. And I really do appreciate that. I'm gonna piggyback on something you said too, um, Sherry, and tie it together a bit. Um, you know, uh, you said that we're holistic. And I, I think that one thing I realized in this, again, this sort of later phase, our most recent phase is that, you know, when, and I'm not speaking for all women in business, uh, but uh, my experience growing up through kind of the corporate world um, was that, um, there was a lot of sort of self-censoring editing or just kind of being the professional part in the workplace. And it seems like women leaders, at least then, um, we don't mention the kids, we don't mention household um, obligations. Um, that's sort of, um, at least in my, my experience, like we sort of edit that stuff out when at least when we're in kind of a pretty male centric environment. Um, whereas with our sisters, whether in professional relationships or personal relationships, we kind of get to be that holistic version um, of ourselves, which feels really nice. Um, and so to, to not feel like it's like somehow taboo to mention, you know, you've got to, you got to take your kid to the doctor um, is, uh, or something like that is, is kind of a nice, is a nice and just sort of, again, repeating the word authentic, but you kind of feel like you can really just, um, be who you are. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I, and I, it's still, I am still keeping an eye on the chat and I love the feedback that's coming in. I think that this, this conversation is clearly, um, very needed. Um, and I thank all of you for being so, so open to just kind of jumping in. Um, so, so somebody said something interesting to me uh, a while back and I wanna kind of, I'm gonna talk to Thela now cause I think that you're gonna have some interesting insight on this. So, so what are some 
some tactical ways, um, and feel free to chime in everybody else, but what are some tactical ways that you use in your work and in your life to bring your sisters along and to create these sisterhoods and this feeling of community amongst women? Because like, Thela, I know you have a just a ton of experience with that. I'm really fortunate and blessed to have an incredible tribe of women that have supported me from a very young age. I'm one of eight children, the youngest, um, and although there are many children in our household, um, there is an age gap difference of seven years, my brother being seven years older than I. And so at a very young age, when um, approximately like five or six years old, I actually started playing sports. And what I really thought about in this whole conversation was where did that community start for me? And it really started around sports at the age of five. Um, I'm working with teams of females that are always, always on sports teams um, in a variety of different sports. Um, and I think it just is a trail and path of who helped, what helped to shape me and build me and mold me. Um, and I think it's also giving me this incredible perspective around that to always try to include and um, invite others into your space. And I'm really about like uniqueness around people and the richness and the beautiful pieces around different people. So I love diversity of just how people come from different perspectives. And I think sometimes even as, and I don't know if others on the panel today can share in this, but as we get older, I feel like sometimes people are less apt to invite into their circles because of a variety of reasons, right? And a variety of things that maybe have happened in their lives. But I have found to my, through my journey, through my life, that as I've done that throughout my entire life, that it's just poured so much back into my own learning and my own growth. So my tactic would be is really just extend yourself no matter what um, experiences maybe you've had and to invite others that are different from you so that you can learn more about yourself and others. Yeah. Well, and Sherry, I'm going to, I'm going to invite you to speak as well, because I know like your, your day-to-day -day grind is, is all about bringing women with you. And, and, you know, you referenced that earlier. So, so what do you think, how, how do you kind of widen that circle and make sure you're involving as many people as you can? Yeah. So, you know, it, by the nature of, of the work that we do uh, with the nonprofits that I run that have resources for women, women, um, and, and our culture is about uh, helping anyone with where they're at, you know, meeting someone with where they're at. In many cases, it's building network. And whether you can call that sisterhood at that moment, you know, sisterhood seems to be a little bit further into after, you know, you identify the network, right? Um, but regardless, uh, we foster um, an environment of never say no. You know, you always um, will meet with somebody. It may not be exactly when they need to meet, um, but you know, Kansas City is known for 20 minute coffees, right? And now it's 20 minute phone calls or, you know, 15 minute Zoom calls. You, you just don't say no, because what's amazing is you'll always find something from that engagement with one person that's completely outside of you know, somebody moving new to Kansas City that needs to build their network, that happens an awful lot. And we are an inviting community. And so it, it's just by saying yes, and you give and you give and you give. And what's amazing is how much you get back by giving. You give of your time. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that, of course. Um, just lovely. So, so the next question that I want to ask, and I'm going to start with Allison because we've had conversations about this. Um, I want to talk to you about your own unique sisterhoods. Um, I think that the commonality, um, there are many commonalities amongst the, the you women that we have here on stage, you're brilliant, passionate, you know, compassionate, kind. Um, but I think that you all kind of approach sisterhood for through different lenses and you know you come to it through different ways and so Allison you and I had kind of talked about some of the different you know organizations and groups that you have that you have used and utilized in your career in your life to to lean on sisterhood so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that um, how exactly sisterhood has has come to you yeah, you know, um, it's an interesting question, Lauren, because I think that I haven't, I didn't have kind of at the outset, the goal of, I want to build out 
relationship with women, relationships with women. And so I'm going to seek out, it was more through the door of the kind of purpose of the group. Um, and so for example, with women who mean business, that's just been an absolutely incredibly um, supportive and nurturing and welcoming network. Um, and there are a lot of things that we do within women who mean business and that kind of universe that is that are very replicable outside of women who mean business. Um, I mean, just to throw out one example, something that we recently started was that on our Facebook page, we um, there's a um, I think Power Pals is what somebody called it, and um, and so um, for each month um, we just pair ourselves up with somebody we want to get to know better, and so just on the Facebook page we say like, all right, who wants me for December? And and knowing you know that like takes you feel a little bit vulnerable doing that right, but you kind of know that somebody's going to be watching a thread and somebody's going to claim you you know or you're going to claim the next person, um, and we've just been doing that in pairs um, over the last couple of months. That's kind of a new COVID thing. I think that we that was start that someone started. Um, I think that's very replicable outside of women who mean business. But anyway, that's one network um, that I've um, just couldn't say enough about how much I treasure. Um, Another, just again, through the, a different door, um, was, um, is a group, a um, national organization called Sisters of Salam Shalom. And that's where small groups of Jewish women and Muslim women come together to get, build relationships as a you know, mechanism to build you know, bigger bridges um, between our communities. Um, so those are just a couple of examples, um, business, personal, religious, otherwise, where for me, um, it was less about seeking out groups of women and more um, kind of what's my objective or my particular interest and then seeking out a group of women who happen to be involved in that. Yeah. Kelly, did you have something that you wanted to add to the conversation? I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> well, it was reflecting on something that Sherry had said. She said, where well, uh, the group may not start initially as a sisterhood. And we're very active down in the urban core working with women returning to community. And one of the concepts that we share is about social capital, which is really just another name for the same thing. You know, who is your social capital? Mm -hmm. And it has been fascinating to me meeting the women and working with them. And the number of times that one of them has looked at me and just said something along the lines of, I listen to every word you say. Yeah. Entering from that, the sentence structure, the interaction with other women when they haven't had those positive relationships in their life between women. And when I see it start at that very base level and then grow has been one of the most heartwarming um, things I've been able to be a part of. Yeah. I think there are times where we can be intentional about what sisterhood we might want to develop. Um, an example of that would be the peer-to-peer -peer role with women entrepreneurs. You know, mm -hmm. there's such unique uh, like-mindedness and challenges related to that. We've even seen that with startup companies that have different issues than, you know, highly successful multi-million dollar women-led companies. But surrounding yourself around sisters that have some of these challenges that help you um, really from, a, from an experience level and, and from a knowledge level, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's being intentional about creating a sisterhood that might, might really be effective to you at the time that you need it, right? Mm -hmm. And at another time that might be um, reaching out to a sisterhood in, in church um, or uh, uh, soccer moms, you know, a sisterhood that really at the moment in your life where you're at, you really need it. And there's nothing wrong with that, being intentional. Yeah, Sherry, I think that that's a great point. I think starting out as a millennial leader, something that I did, which I encourage us, I see through the thread, there's a lot of questions on how do we even start a sisterhood. And something that I did is I actually got out four pieces of paper and I wrote out, you know, the top five people under a category. And so that was folks who I, who I wanted them to mentor me, folks that I had admired, or maybe there are companies that you're like, oh my God, this company is in incredible. And then you go to LinkedIn and you see who works there and you start to build that connection there. And then the fourth area that I really, really stressed and looked for is the advocate space. 
And those are women and leaders who um, will really guide you in a way that you can trust them, but also guide you in a way where they will surround you uh, when times are great and also when you're at that challenging time when you're making shifts. So I always say those are four key groups that I write down. I always update them on a yearly basis because your sisterhood is you got those core groups, but then you have folks that really um, you reach out to on a regular basis. Yeah. There was but, an interesting call this weekend, or it was actually a conference call for um, Greater Kansas City Boys and Girls Club, and it was for young ladies. And someone stated that there were two distinct roles that people play when it's in the mentoring space or coaching space. And I never heard it defined this way. And one was having a sponsor or champion and one was having a mentor. And I think when, particularly when we're younger and we're seeking out a mentor is really distinguishing and understanding both roles for those um, and just the, capa the capacity that each can provide. But one of the things that we really walked away from that conversation too is that in each, each role, it's really important that it's a win-win for both parties. So the mentor and mentee, that they can both kind of grow from those relationships to decide ditto what classes is on that. Yeah. Well, and so I wanted to, to kind of follow up on that. You know, we, we've mentioned the word mentorship several times. Um, and I, I think that for a lot of us, that mentorship, mentor-mentee relationship is where a lot of our community began. Um, at least that's kind of how it, how it happened in my life. Um, and so Julia, I actually wanted to ask you, um, I know that you are a, a, just such a leader within your organization. Um, you know, I think em empower her, I'm never sure how to pronounce that. So forgive me, but empower her, um, you know, you, you want a STEMI award because of the work that you're doing to empower and support your internal women leaders. And th that I know that mentorship is a large part of that. So I just wanted to, to ask, you and, and the rest of the panelists, you know, how do you, how do you find a mentor and how do you make sure that that relationship is mutually beneficial? You know, it's, in, it's empower her. So that's really great. Um, <laughs> a shout out. And actually that was a group that started about six years ago. And it was um, really something that made, uh, made a difference, not only in my life, but I know in Henderson, I think there's a lot of different ways though, that you can go about um, doing that. Um, sometimes, uh, and the word that I was thinking about when everyone was talking was sometimes things also happen unintentionally. You know, what you, what you want to do is you want to tie your passion um, with something that creates a purpose. And, you know, and, and then what happens is that you build that mentor mentee relationship, you know, unintentionally, but sometimes it is intentional. So with, for example, for, for us, for Henderson, um, we've been doing a lot of things. Um, Empower is one of them. And we actually have set up coffee connections. We've set up introductions, lean in circles, uh, different things that have helped, I think, create relationships that then also lead to opportunities to, to, um, to mentoring. But I wanted to also touch a little bit on um, just inclusion. And I know, I know Thayla mentioned it previously, but it's been heavy on my mind and Certainly we are all um, female, but in my office, we're also talking a lot about other things. And we've started something called Unite and it's the LGBTQIA group for Henderson. And what we're doing is every Friday, we have a fabulous Friday where there is someone that posts something and something that was posted last Friday really resonated with me that I wanted to share. And, it, and it's about the word, oh, we're just going through a phase. And, you know, sometimes we think going through a phase is a bad thing. Well, guess what? It's actually a good thing. And the whole idea was that we need to celebrate each other. So, you know, I know I've kind of gone all the way around the globe, but it starts with celebrating each other. And, and then that leads to that relationship that's formed that then leads to a mentoring. And, and then what I always find, and I know everyone in this call finds it too, is that I learn something every day from the people that I connect with. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. Um, I think if you, if you approach life and you do look at it that way and you, and you try to learn, then that's when those relationships really grow. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll pick up there, Julie, really well said. And that it's interesting to hear kind of your, 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 um, your mention of kind of mentoring and those, those situations can be unintentional or Classy's version where it's very intentional. I think that both 
are both totally work. And that I think that, you know, what I hear is like, we just have to be open to it and looking for it and listening for it and, and um, entering a conversation where, um, you know, where you leave a conversation and you, and you, you have that feeling like, gosh, that's a really neat person. I want to get to know them better. And you just kind of know on some deeper level that you're really going to grow out of getting to know that person. And I think that that kind of a, you know, we're using the word mentoring, but I think it comes in so many different forms, formal and informal, more senior to us, more junior to us, peers. Um, I think I think of it as kind of just ways that we all can grow and develop um, and thrive by virtue of getting to know other people. I mean, that's very general, but um, but I think of mentoring relationship that the mentoring relationships that have impacted me. Um, some of my male bosses over the years, and I really have only ever worked for um, male managers as it's, as it's um, happened, but those are super important relationships to me, even in my professional, in my career as a female leader. Um, and um, similarly with other women um, peers and my juniors who I mentored, I got something out of that. It was very mutual too. So I think mentoring just comes in a lot of different shapes and forms. I, I agree with that. I, I think um, I think it used to be, you know, everybody needs a mentor. No, not anymore. It's at different junctures as to what you're doing and where your growth's at, because hopefully we're all growing too and our experience is more. And so you need to find the next person and not that you're ditching your old mentor, right? But you're just advancing again. Uh, and it might not be the sisterhood. In many cases, it does need to be some male energy involved in that, right? Um, and I, I know we talked to, uh, Thayla, thanks for bringing up sponsorship, but you know that's really the, the nuance now, right? Having a sponsor that is actually committed to you as a, with the talent that you have to help you get to where you want to be, whether that's through a career or goals that you're setting and actually advocate on your behalf. Um, there's a whole lot more traction on that advocacy by being a sponsor uh, than having somebody to rebound things off as, as mentors. So I, I encourage especially millennials to be looking towards that in their career. Anybody else? Mentorship is a really, really important topic and, and it clearly it struck a chord with the audience. So um, you, Kelly, I, I, I see it looks like you might have something to say. <laughs> well, I just keep thinking about Madeleine Albright, you know, famous quote, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. And I love that. Yeah. Well, so, so one of the questions that I, I really want to ask you, and we're, we're about to have a, a potentially hard conversation. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, but so one of the, the things that I often hear in my day to day when I tell people what I do, um, you know, I, I often hear, well, but, but women are so catty. Women are so competitive. You know, I've, I've had so many, you know, mean girl talking about mean girls and stuff like that. And, and I would, I would argue that when you give women a platform and an opportunity, we want nothing more than to support each other. Um, but I want to ask you, um, it, throughout the course of your careers, have you ever dealt with, um, you know, maybe a woman who wasn't as supportive as, as she might have been? And, and how did you deal with that? How did you, how did you work to, to create Sister in the face of adversity? I'll grab that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know we're in thought process and thought mode. Um, so I did have an experience that was extremely painful um, where a woman was my immediate supervisor um, that was not supportive. And every day I really questioned, did I want to keep going back to that job? Um, it was difficult by all means. And this went on for a good year, year and a half. Um, I think my greatest takeaways from that though were that I wanted to make sure I never emulated that same behavior for another woman. Um, yeah. that wanted to make sure that I really uplifted women to really help them to be their very best um, and just people in general, but really emphasis strongly on women. Um, so I think we have to take all those moments and times to really reflect on our own 
um, response, but also how it's really impacting us internally and what we can do to help reshape ourselves from that experience. Yeah. I, I totally agree, Thela. You know, I, maybe when you asked that Lauren that question, Lauren, and we all kind of got silent for a second, we might have all been <laughs> thinking about that one thing, and it like weighs heavy on you. Um, I, I can, you know, I'm I went to my thing, my 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 person, that story for me um, in my mind, and I think that, you know, in my experience, I I know that I, looking back on it, it was tough, man. I did everything I possibly could to, um, to address the situation, to work on the relationship. It wasn't being reciprocated. You know, I didn't, it's fun, funny. I didn't think of it at all at the time as the fact that she happened to be a woman. Like it was just mm -hmm. conflict. It was just conflict resolution. Um, and I haven't had that experience in my career of that stereotype of women, you know, not being support any being any less supportive of each other than than men. Um, I, I really just haven't seen that in my career. Um, but but I think that um, you know maybe for some women, I know for me, like it's hard to let go of those you know once in a while situations that you can't make make good, you know, that you can't fix. Um, but what I took from that, Thayla, to your point, is just sort of like. Like that was my takeaway, right? Like I can't win them all and that's okay. And um, she's going to be her and I'm going to be me and I'm moving forward. And I think that was an important lesson. You know, you just can't win them all, women or men in our careers. And um, as tough as that is to accept once in a while, that's just reality. Yeah. But I, also well, I think we have to call out that there is gender bias, right? Um, so uh, there's probably a whole lot more men that put us in these situations than there are women, and yet we're focused on, you know, why didn't a woman bring us along? Um, I, I know many of you know Rania Anderson, an author and speaker in Kansas City that, that wrote the book that does the tactical way in which men and women should be uh, addressing this bias. And, and I, uh, the, the one that I always, um, the example she uses in her book that I absolutely love that any of us, whether we're men uh, or women, you know, you're in a, you're at a conference room and everybody's had a, a great meeting and there's been bagels and coffee. And what do women do, right? It's just an eight that we get up, we start cleaning the table and the men let us, right? <laughs> because that's, we just do it. And, and they were talking about how it's really important that whether it's a male leader in that environment or a female leader in that environment, it should be that everybody's involved in that process. And in most cases, there might be two, two women to 10 men around the table. It's by changing the behavior a little bit and, and being cognizant that sometimes we as women precipitate that behavior. Uh, with ourselves and, and the people that were around. So I highly encourage you to look at um, the book that Rania Anderson, because it's tactical in how we can change. And yeah. what I did also want to say is that it also is a level around, you know, self-love. And I learned this very early in my career when I worked for U.S. Center Claire McCaskill. And she'd always say to me, classy, don't let anyone dim your light. So it doesn't matter what someone says how they try to interrupt your success if it's in the universe for you to be successful keep on doing your job and all the things will fall where they need to and so I've always thought about no one can dim my light unless I allow them to do it so I'll continue to spread my joy spread my light and uplift other women because at the end of the day we're all going through stuff but you know what it's better when we're together so that positivity matters and it's all around a mindset and classy you are you are so fantastic about spreading that joy you just always have the biggest smile on your face and i always leave our interactions just feeling better about life so so thank you for that um so so we're we're about to head into q a and um vicky and christine over at the chamber have been dutifully sending me questions. Um, but before that, you know, I, I know that we just talked about something that's kind of difficult and it's one of those elephants in the room, but I want to, I want to close out this portion with something that I think is going to be lovely. Uh, we'll see, but I just want to ask, um, how do women inspire you? 
Oh, yeah, I see that face glassy. <laughs> um, and so why don't we go ahead? I, I'm going to I'm going to start with Julie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think the biggest thing is women inspire me when they are fearless. You know, when they have that courage to raise their hand, you know, there's another really good Marilyn Albright quote. Um, it took me a long time to um, develop a voice and now I'm not going to be silent. And, and I think about that all the time is that I think it's important for women to speak up, but I also think it's really important for us to know when to speak. And that is something that I think everyone needs to learn is that we do need to listen in fact, I had a friend, one of my um, inner circle friends actually tell me to count to 10 before I speak. Because some people, you know, might say that I talk too much. Um, <laughs> but the reality is that um, it's, it's very true. And so that's, that's what inspires me. It was when, when people and women especially are willing to take a stand for something they believe in. Yeah. I, I love watching this because you can see all of the heads just like nodding up and down. Like, yes, so true. Absolutely. I love that. Uh, how, how about you, Sherry? Yeah, so so this is an easy one. And I, I work with our, we have a full, uh, an all-female staff that every day just give and give and give. Okay, you said you were the crier on this. I don't even cry. So, but <laughs> when you talk about these women that give and the women that have these barriers that put so much into, ah, oh, you know, and we're, we're on the front lines right now, right? <laughs> Unemployed women and small business owners crashing and it's hard. But our women wanted to come back to the office uh, even though we were on, you know, uh, in March when we left, they said, no, we need to be back in the office. We got too much to do. We got to get back June 1st. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I, we want that uh, exposure to each other and uh, have, you know, been able to work in the office because every day they're talking to somebody that really, really needs some help. Yeah. How much you, Kelly? Well, I was... <laughs> thinking at first, which is I exist in an all-female world, which is really an interesting. I have an all-female immediate family. My staff is all-female, all 26 of them. All of my clients are 99.9% .9 female. So it, it, that's been a really interesting journey in an all-female world. And I love just the day in and day out conversations. But Sherry, when you mentioned the women that you're serving and that you're empowering, I think that is that's the same for me, the women I'm working, because when I have women who've been five-time felons, seven-time felons, and they turn around and they graduate from Rockhurst College and they do these things, those are the women who, who empower me, who, who give me the message. Oh. Yep. That's, that's lovely. Uh, does anybody else want to chime in? You know, you, you are all women who inspire, so I'm, I'm particularly excited to hear what inspires you. So does anybody else wanna pop in there? I'll give one. Um, you know, um, I'm gonna throw this compliment your way, Lauren, um, as an example of this. Um, women inspire me um, when they, and I think women are, I don't wanna say uniquely, but extra, extra good at this, um, at making other people feel special, at listening, um, asking probing questions and really listening. And then I pinpointing what what it is that you might feel good about yourself and then really elevating that and i think lauren you know you make everybody you talk to feel like they are a rock star that you just you just really you see the light in them and then you, and you're not shy about about saying it and um and that makes everybody feel good it doesn't matter where you are in life or in your career whether the person saying it is kind of more younger than you older than you feels good to be complimented and flattered, especially when it is something that you feel good about yourself. So I think women who do that well inspire me and, and you're one of those, Lauren. 
Well, thank you. And as Sherry mentioned, um, I am a crier. So <laughs> that just made me tear up. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, it is it is an honor to know women like you and get to compliment women like you. Um, so, so I'm going to start asking some questions from the audience. And we, we've got a ton of really fantastic ones. But I think that th this is a really great one. I'm going to start with it. So as a sisterhood, what do you think are the most critical changes that we must make to face the future effectively? That is a, that is a deep, deep question, but an important one. I think it's about learning to fail. Um, and, you know, we don't know what the future holds for any of us. We're dealing with, you know, a pandemic, a crisis on many levels, whether I'm looking at crime, our homelessness in our community, or the evictions getting ready to start. Um, I think that we have to have the courage to be entrepreneurial and innovative. And this is the time to succeed as we fail because we're gonna learn a lot of stuff around ourselves and how much tenacity that women have. And so I think that um, that's important thing to think about. And I think, you know, what helped me in my career was I was always a high risk taker if there is a house that's on fire, I'm running to the house. That's just what I naturally do. And I think that we all need to get the courage within ourselves to take that next step. You know, if you want to move to a different field, if you want to go back to school, you know, take it. Life is short and uh, there's no reason to wait when you're amazing and you have the support system. Yeah. That's really great. I, I oh, would. Sorry. Add, <laughs> I'm sorry. I I, I would add. I, I think corporate America is at a critical juncture. Um, you know, there's nothing light about what's in in store for us as women, and you. I'm sure you've seen all the stats, right? Three times more likely, even senior women are exiting their jobs at a faster rate than men. Um, so regardless of the hiccup, we have the long-term effects of where we're at, uh, coming out of COVID is relevant and, and who knows what's next beyond that. Right. And I do think it's really important that any women that are in senior roles with corporate America have got to look for, you know, uh, wage gap issues, paid, paid family leave, more flexible workforce environments, remote uh, employment, if possible, you know, anything that could make for a more favorable environment for the women uh, that are working in these cor in corporate America is best for us all. We cannot lose as much ground as it looks like we're about to. I think it's important to use this moment in time that we've used so much on reflecting on who we are and what the world is at this moment. Um, to really, really seek deep within to really determine our role, true passion and our purpose. Um, I think if anything, the pandemic has done for us has really created that opportunity for that. Um, and I think that no matter what decisions you make or what steps you make to be innovative or creative or change your whole career trajectory, is just really seeking them, making sure it's content with who you are and your own purpose. And I think um, something we touched on, a couple of you made great points around, around the importance of advocacy and championing, which are like more active words than mentoring. Mentoring almost sounds kind of passive. So I really, I mean, that's something I'm taking from our conversation, just kind of having that mindset when we're interacting with um, um, whomever in the community, you know, this focus is on women today, but just people who come to us for help, we can be a sounding board or we can really like listen for how we can help that person succeed if, if it's in within our, you know, ability. Um, so um, that's that advocacy thing, I think is a, a big part of what I know I want to do more of. That's huge. So, so one of the questions that, that just came in, and I, I think it's an important question, um, and I'm just gonna open it up to the group, and so feel free to take a moment to think about it. Um, but can the panelists speak to how the various intersections of their identities, for example, areas where you have or lack privilege influence, influence their ability to see or create sisterhoods? And that's a, that's a, a tough one. 
but I, I think it's pretty important. It is a great question, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Lauren, you know, could you read it one more time? I think we. Yeah, yeah. Can really the panelists really speak to how the various intersections of their identities, for example, areas where you have or lack privilege, influence their ability to see or create sisterhoods? So, so I mean, if we if we were condensing it down, does does your intersectionality as a woman, as a woman of color, as a member of the LGBTQIA, like pieces of your identity, how do they influence your ability to create sisterhood? I would say one, one area of certainly privilege, so to speak, that I've been thinking about a lot this year is the fact that I can do my work sitting right here in my office by Zoom, uh, you know, and remain fully employed this year. And man, that's a privilege in a pandemic. Um, and so to the extent that I've tried, you know, during this time to also kind of support and foster sisterhood, virtual sisterhoods um, through, you know, through my seat here um, in Leewood, uh, you know, that that's a privilege that I know I um, am aware of constantly. Um, and um, I'm trying to make the most use of. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about just that intentional piece though with the connections and, um, you know, Allison said it best, we're, we're in a different world today. I, I found myself amazingly being more connected than I ever have been to a lot of different um, sisters and, and women, you know, whether they're from my college that I went to school with or my women who mean business group or my church group, whomever it is, or colleagues at my office. But I think it's a matter of actually being intentional to reach out. And I, I think that's what we've all learned so much these days is that we've just taken things for granted for too long. And, and the good news is that our sisters will be there for us even if we take them for granted. I think that's the good news. But you know, when I just think about all the different intersections that you, that you have in life, you, you touch so many different pieces. And, and again, it's, it's figuring out how to tie those all together to make the right impact on you personally and then outwardly to the world. Yeah, I, I just kept thinking, you know, the, my mentor always says to me, Classy, you are not small, you are gigantic, right? And to, to think that some of us can put ourselves in a box and not want to get out of it. So I think always what's, what's really key is how to shine. And I think uh, to me, shining is showing your successes, promotions, if you're on a panel like this, and highlighting the work that other folks that you admire are doing. And the whole power of that is that other people see it. And then that inspires them to encourages them to make a step forward in whatever they're they're trying to do. So I think a lot of that is whatever makes us different, take advantage of it. That's why we're we are unique. Yeah. I love that. Does anyone else have anything to add? Because I have my next question already. <laughs> So, so this one is going, this is actually going to go out to each of you and I'd like to hear, hear from, from every last one of you. Um, and I, I think I'm probably going to pick on you, but um, if you could talk to your younger self, or if you were talking to, you know, someone from an up and coming generation or, you know, what is the one key piece of wisdom or takeaway that you would like that that person that young girl um you know that protege mentee to have when it comes to creating community and creating sisterhood um what, what's the one key piece of advice or wisdom you'd share and i'm going to pick on classy because you're in the top left of my screen <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> All I keep thinking of is, you know, my, my father was arrested, incarcerated for 15 years of my life. And so I really did not know how to trust other people. And I think for me, what immediately came up with you are worthy, you are amazing. And there are days where you're not going to know what's going on, but it's okay, just keep on going. And so that constant knowing of um, your sisterhood is here to be with you one step at a time. Uh, one day at a time uh, is what I would tell my younger self. Okay. Allison, you're next up on my screen. How about you? I think I would um, 
looking back, I would tell myself to, to think more intentionally about nurturing relationships with women. Um, even though I was in more, you know, male centric environments, there weren't very many women around. There were some, and I, it didn't, again, like it wasn't a thing. It didn't occur to me to look outside of whatever company I was working in at the time and build communities. Um, so just nurturing relationships in a deliberate way with the, the women you encounter, women and men, but um, you encounter who you know um, can really help you grow. Um, I, I think I would have started that earlier if I had known. Okay. Thayla, how about you, my friend? You're on mute. <laughs> so I think it's really important to being true to yourself through this whole entire journey. So if I were to look back at myself at 15 or 16, just remaining true to who I was and who God had created me to be and really embracing that. But I think there's also a second point that's really important is that in your resiliency to really achieve what you desire to achieve, to never really let the nose take hold of you. That um, I was once told by uh, one of my supervisors is that I didn't hear no. I mean, what it meant for me was, is that when no was said, I was thinking about another opportunity or another angle or another perspective on how I could accomplish the goal I was seeking. So I think that's so important because I know often, particularly for women, um, if someone says no, or there's a barrier or a block, we kind of stop. And that's never really been my trajectory or the case for me. And I think a lot of that comes from my mother was very, very strong, but that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. Julie, how about you? I love that. I was about ready to say and learn learn when to say no, Thela. But um, <laughs> no, you know, I was I was thinking about just don't be afraid to take risk, you know. And, and it goes back to this whole idea of not being afraid to fail, and and it's because we learn so much and we grow so much out of it. And so I, I know at least I was, I was that person that was a little bit hesitant way back when, you know, I'm going to do what's safe. So don't be afraid to take a chance, that leap of faith. I love that, that leap of faith. Um, and that's what so many of you have, have done and continue to do in your careers. That's why one of the many reasons you're such an inspiration. Um, Sherry, I am, I, I'm, I'm excited for your answer. Yeah, I don't know how you should be. Um, yeah, I had a moment to think about it. Um, I would be encouraging financial self-sufficiency. Um, it seems like a lot of our problems as women, our barriers are based on not having economic independence. And it doesn't mean you can't get married and have kids. It just means... Uh, being more aware. I mean, the, the number, you know, even later in life, we have so many clients that end up, um, you know, as, as a uh, getting divorced and, and then their financial situation just absolutely explodes and they start over. And I, you know, they're, they're just only because they were not informed. And what we see is the, the strongest empowerment tool that we have is that financial education. Yeah. Love that. That is yeah. such a, an important, crucial piece. And I, I don't know if we talk about it often enough. So thank you for, for sharing, sharing that, um, shedding a light on it. And, and, and last but not least, um, you know, Kelly, I, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Well, I was thinking, Sherry, as you were sharing that at one point in my life, my mom said to me, a man is not a financial plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate the fact you said get married and you didn't say a man for today's time. So anyway, you know, Classy and several of you kind of said the same thing, but I wish that I had realized early that um, my differences, the things that made me different were okay. I didn't need to put the uniform on that everybody else did and to embrace those gifts and to follow my passion because my passion is brought the energy and the people to my life to make things happen. And one of the things I say all the time is if the door opens, walk through it. And, you know, which is that risk taking. So anyway. Look at all of those nodding heads. I, I love to see that because you just said something that truly resonated. Well, well, friends, um, we're about to, to close out the afternoon. And I just, I, I want to say thank you 
so much, um, our illustrious panelists. I've been so looking forward to this event and it has been an honor and a privilege to get to hear your wisdom and your thoughts. And, you know, I just, I, I hope and I imagine that the audience has gotten as much out of this as I have, um, you know, but you are all fabulous and I am in awe of you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dana Foote with KPMG for some closing remarks. Um, thank you all for taking the time and sticking with us. Um, it has been a real pleasure and thank you, Dana. Thank you, Lauren. And wow, that was a great presentation. I know I took lots of notes um, and um, maybe some of the things I wanted to share as I summarized it as um, I really like Sherry's comment of uh, don't lose the progress we've made um, as women in corporate America and otherwise. Um, I liked uh, the motherhood comment Sherry also made about staying strong in leadership um, despite or maybe in addition to doing the things you do at home with your parent, with your children. Uh, I personally have two daughters, uh, an eighth grader and a third grader. And I really hope they're my future leaders that'll get all of us through um, in many day, many years and days to come. And then the risk, take, take the leap of faith. Um, I think that's something important for all of us. Um, again, my name is Dana Foote. I am here as um, the outgoing chair of the Executive Women's Leadership Council. I'll just say that it's a wonderful organization. I'm at the end of a four, four year term um, and the outgoing chair this year and it really is the best professional community organization I've ever been associated with. I've really enjoyed my time there with a lot of exceptional women, some of those that you see on the panel today. Um, so really have enjoyed that and I, I really liked the lots of mentors comment. I think you can always add more mentors and I know EWLC has, um, I have definitely added some friends and mentors from that organization. I do want to just hit on one other thing. My, my job is I am a partner at KPMG. So I'm one of those people that is in that corporate world that you all talked about tonight. Um, it is male dominated to some degree, um, but I, I go back to Sherry's comment today that she said about don't, don't lose the perspective that we've and the progress that we've made in corporate America. I think sisterhood has got me through that too. Um, my assigned roommate, my first day of public accounting way back many, too many years ago, was a, a lady that became my very best friend and still is today. And um, I was in her wedding and vice versa. And she's a, who I call um, when I need that sisterhood. So something like that, I think is really important. Um, KPMG is a sponsor of the EWLC and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and so I just want to share a few things um, from a KPMG perspective. Um, we I, we have quite a few things we're doing for women. So we really are trying to change that male dominated um, workforce. And we think it really starts early. Um, so we have a program called uh, Future Leaders where we sponsor um, underprivileged women to go to college and pay for their um, college all through all four years. Uh, so it's something that's really important to me. We have the KPMG network of women. Um, so in that organization, we, it's just, an, again, it's sisterhood. It's all the women of KPMG with lots of programs and connectivity. Um, and something I'm really proud of, I'm the co-chair of our Advancing Lead Account Talent. We call it the ALAT program. And it's all about getting our women, so women partners, leading our largest clients across the firm. So I'm really trying to advance women in leadership roles across the firm. So KPMG is proud of what we do here. And I'm proud that we were able to sponsor this event today too. And thank you all for joining. Um, and uh, with that, I'm just gonna thank the panelists again. Thank you all for joining. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, everyone. With that, we're gonna call it a wrap today. Thank you.